everyone, Jordan here, and today we're back from a two-week hiatus from no content, and today we're going to be flying a new airliner that has been released for prepared version 4, uh, the Captain Sam Boeing 767-300ER. Right now I'm in the Delta Airlines livery that's currently available on INI builds, and we're going to be doing a long haul with it. This is my first flight with the Captain Sim 76, but you know, I've flown the 75 plane as well as the 777, so it really shouldn't be any different. But anyway, enough small talk, let's get down to what we're going to be doing for today's flight. Today, we're going to be flying Delta Airlines Flight 57 with Novstop service from Schiphol to Salt Lake City. We're currently at gate E4, or Echo 4, here in Schiphol, and it's roughly around 10 in the morning. Departure time is scheduled for about 25 minutes from now, and I'm currently flying on VAT soon with Colin. I'm going, to be going, I'm going to be referring to myself as Delta 56 Heavy because someone actually is already as Delta 57 to my surprise, but we'll have to make do. Okay, and now for some numbers before we get ready for departure. Right now, our block fuel is 136,000 pounds of fuel, with roughly 20 minutes of extra fuel time in case of something. Our takeoff weight is going to be just shy of 400,000 pounds at 395,443. We'll be cruising at flight level 300 with a cost index of 70. Our load factor is actually quite low right now. Our ZFW is going to be uh, 260.2. It's not full. It's not going to be a full payload. I purposely set it to be a little lighter than usual given the current conditions. Our current flight plan has us departing in Amsterdam. We'll be flying north over the United Kingdom, cross the Atlantic on a more northern route, close to Greenland and Iceland. And then we're going to kind of descend back down, pass through Goose Bay, and then fly over the Great Lakes and then descend down to, I'm sorry, Salt Lake City. Anyways, there's not much more for me to discuss prior to departure, so I'm going to leave you guys with a few more shots as we get ready to push, and then we can get started, I suppose. Just a little FYI everyone, I have turned down a lot of my settings over here and here just to make sure the performance is fine. Um, I'm sure Captain Sim will do some more optimization later on, but as of now, I don't have a very powerful... Well, my PC is just kind of mediocre at best, so I've turned down some settings. Anyways, if I can't see something like on the iCast, I'll just pull it up and it'll be fine. So, anyways, with that being said, we can go down to the FMC and we can start inputting some stuff. So, for options, setup, fuel, and payload... Um... Let's set that. Our ZFW is going to be 260.2. Gross overload by 2. Okay, that's fine. And we're going to go to payload. Packs. Okay, packs cargo. Fuel. Um, okay, yeah, that's why it says we're gross overload. We don't need that much fuel. So fuel is going to be 163.2. All right, gate, let's put Echo 4 in. Okay, route, Echo, Hotel, Alpha, Mike, nope. And destination, Kilo, Sierra, Lima, Charlie. There we go. We're gonna be Delta 57, is our flight number. All right, and let's request, there it is, okay. And let's go to departure arrival. Hey, Colin, what runway are we expecting for um, Amsterdam? Uh, I mean, you could take 36 center, but I'm taking 36 left because I actually has a SID. Okay, so you're taking. Think... I'm taking 36 left. Okay, I can just fall off of you. We'll take 36 left. Okay, okay. and I'm going to do in the uh, bird 2R, I think. It's actually. It's now, I think. It's are you going to do like. Not... I'm sorry? Are what? you going to do boarding with uh, GSX? Yeah, I'm done boarding actually. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna be to doing the Berg 3 uh, Victor departure. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Transition. All right, and and then it's straight to Bergy and okay, let's check this. Check, 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 and um, let me check what runways are in operation for Salt Lake City. Actually, give me one second. Okay. Okay, given the, uh, after looking at the tap, we're going to take runway 34 left for arrival. If it'll let me. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not set me for an ILS on that. Nope, 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 nope. Go back, please. Thank you. Uh, is it 34 left? Are they taking 34 left? Let me check. Let me check. Yep, 34 left. Okay, and we're going to have the um, Nordic 6. I think it's actually Nordic 7 now. Arrival. Oh yeah, that's because the Eric. Oh, that's odd. Okay, Nordic Four with the uh, DDY transition uh, looks good. Route. Is there any discontinuities? 
yes, we can keep the vectors. And let's activate. Perf in it. Okay, cruise altitude is going to be 300. And cost index is going to be 70. Uh, we can actually request this. And oh, that's cool. It'll put all that in. All right, reserves. We've got 15. I'm going to push back right now if you're good. Okay. Or do you all want right. me to wait a little? Can you wait just, just a second? All right, for departure, we're going to go flaps 15. CG. Uh, oh, the other one. Let's see. You're right. Copy it. Options set up, fuel and like payload. Oh, that's cool. All right, so our current CG is 25.7. I know the resolution is terrible on this FMC. That's purposeful. Captain Singh gives you the option to do this. Okay, what do you mean invalid? Oh, we're going to just round it up to 26. Okay, that's fine. Um, our takeoff weight is going to be 395.4. Okay. And for departure, thrust temp. This is where like having the iPad, I'm sorry, the EFB from the NGXU is really nice because you can calculate all of this right then and mm -hmm. there. But for this, you have to actually like go and pull that up. Yeah. Okay. How about we just try 50 degrees Celsius? Is that okay? Nope. Invalid entry. You know what? I'm going to leave it. Okay. I'm going to push back now. Anyways, for departure, we're going to have a V1 of 155 knots, a VR of 158, and a V2 of 163. We're going to add five knots to that. So let's set that into our MCP right now. So let's do 168. Okay, looks good. Ready to climb straight out to flight level 300 since there's like no other traffic here besides you and that uh, Dash 8. No, that Dash 8 left. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, I was talking to him. He was nice and then he just left. Oh, that's so mean. Okay, he we goes, the flight director's on. He goes, is there any other traffic here? And I, was, I go, yes. He goes, good morning. <laughs> and I say good morning to him and now he's gone. Oh, that's so mean. <laughs> Uh, one thing, so, in the overhead, the elevation of Salt Lake City is uh, 4,226 feet, so let's put down 4,250. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, this gives us the option to have, like, more specific stuff in here. I'm used to, like, the 7.3 where it goes in, like, incre increments of, like, 50. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a while. Can I just hold this down? Wow, I mean, yeah, imagine I having to put in your landing elevation. Can't relate. You think you're cool. In my more advanced triples, in my more advanced 76. Hey, you're using our no section. Section 41 is, I think. Huh? You're using section 41 of my nose right now. Oh, okay. Okay, so we can get the center pumps on here, and I have a cross speed so we don't have any fuel imbalance. I'm going to go a little bit off 7.3 terminology here, and I'm going to turn on the stuff for the right engine, and then you would close it for the left, and that should be fine for engine start. So we're going to start engine number one now, and we should have air for that. Yep, we're good. Posted placards and lighted information signs located throughout the cabin in addition to any crew member instructions. <laughs> including the use of e-cigarettes, is not allowed on any Delta flight. And federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying a restroom smoke detector. There are eight exits on this plane. 
four doors, two on each side, and four window exits over the wings. Each door has a detachable slide that can be used as a wrap. Okay, let's start clearing messages off the iCast. So let's get our packs on, research fans on, have those good pressure on from the engines. Let's get the gens on for the engine so we can turn off APU power. We look good to go. APU can come to off. APU, that can go off there. We look good for that. We can close that valve because we don't have any air from the APU anymore. Dark pressure still looks good. Um, this all looks good. We can get the taxi lot on since we're about to taxi. Um, let's also check the overhead, make sure everything is fine. Pressurization looks good. Lights are good as of now. Hydraulics are fine. Fuel pumps are good. I'm going to leave the cross feed on just for another minute. I'm sorry, just for another minute to ensure that we don't have any fuel imbalances. And we actually should be good to go. No smoking and fasten seatbelt signs to on. And we can go to flaps 15. The only message, is, the only message left on our iCast is the parking brake, which means we've got everything done. We're good. Let's go flaps 15 and do a quick flight controls check, and then we can start taxiing. This should be plenty of time to go through the safety briefing for the uh, crew. Yes, sir. Let's see. Three six left is often used because of the air traffic using er, because the air traffic using it causes the least nuisance to residents. It's fascinating. I know. I feel bad for the trip. So I'm just kind of like kind of good or whack. Both. Yeah, I use mute to tomato as one of those two. I can use phone tomato. Well, we're finally approaching runway 36, and there's Colin right there in the uh, 300 ER. You're going to San Francisco, right? LAX. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I just, I realized I did the same flight last week. Okay. Will you be slamming into the ground again? Most likely. And there he goes. Oh my god! <laughs> I've opened the window to let a breeze in. Oh, Can don't you do that? I cannot do that because PNBG does not allow for that. Yeah. I remember when I first flew the 753 after it came out, I uh, left my window open. Despite a big tag <laughs> saying window not closed. You know. L. Yeah, and then Kill. I had a pressurization warning. I was like, why? And then I was like, oh, damn. Four takeoff checklist, cabin crew, signal, uh, weather radar display, on terrain radar displays, off. Skipple traffic, KLM 602, depart or lining up 36 left, Skipple.
Skipple, traffic, KLM 602, heavy, departing 36 left, Skipple. 55 I'm just going to watch Colin depart because he might explode again, and that's going to be so hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you're running out of runway. V1. Rotate. You do not have a lot of runway left. Okay. I'm rotating right now. Okay. Oh, there you go. Did I slam into the ground? No, but you're looking like you're gonna... Oh my god. You're like moving in slow-mo. Oh. <laughs> Did it happen? Yeah, back into the ground. Yay. So that's what Tower saw that one time when I paused. Oh, now being engaged. All right, brakes released. Runway entry procedure. Text Contest. runway turn off lights on. Landing lights on. No speed light on because I'm gonna depart straight out. And let's go. Hold on, I'm gonna mute you just for takeoff. All right, auto brakes to RTL. We're ready for takeoff. Skippable traffic, Delta 56 heavy taxiing onto runway 3, 6 feet departure. Okay. Okay, and let's just make sure we have everything set. Park and brake, just for one second. Lights look good, look good over here, looks good, looks good. Let's set this to continuous. Um, that can go to both. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Everything looks good over there. We only have parking brake for the ICAST message, so we should be good to go. Parking brakes release. Let's go. Scoop traffic delta 57 heavy departing runway 36. All right. And 40% M1. And thrust set.
Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we've just passed around 24,000 feet. Right now, we still have about 11 hours to go until we arrive into Salt Lake City. And right now, there's not much else for me really to discuss during this phase of the flight. So I'm going to switch to some time-lapse footage, and we can enjoy the really cool scenic views of the Atlantic Ocean and continental United States and Canada as we get closer to our destination. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to the footage. We're now beginning our descent into Salt Lake City after roughly 10 hours of flight time. Right now we're descending down to about 6,000 feet as we get ready for the approach. We're going to overshoot the airport and then fly downwind back onto it and then come straight in for runway 36 left. After looking at the Matar for uh, KSLC, it's going to be clear skies, temperatures roughly around 58 degrees Fahrenheit, around uh, 14 degrees Celsius, so it's going to be pretty nice and calm. We'll get some nice views. We might have a cloud pop up here and there, but everything looks pretty good to go as of now. Concerning the actual landing in Salt Lake City, runway 34 left is 12,000 feet long, so that's plenty of runway for us to get down and stop. We're going to be going flaps 30 with a V-ref of 134 knots. We're going to add 5 for Delta's ops, and it should be a pretty straightforward approach, nothing too serious. Winds are variable right now at the airport, although that might change in a minute. I'm going to check the Matar one last time before we land and see if anything's expected. Alright, and there's Salt Lake City and the airport. We're just going to fly past it on downwind and then turn around right back and head in straight for runway 34. Very scenic though, very scenic.
Okay, runway in sight. Let's get ready for landing. All right, let's go. Flaps 20. All right, flaps 20. Gear down. Landing lights. We're going to be going auto brake 1 for this landing. We don't need we don't really need the auto brake. It's fine. Okay, spoilers armed. Are they armed? And yeah, they should be. Nope. There we go. Speed brake armed. Excuse me, going altitude is going to be 10,000. And let's set our landing speed of 140 knots. You know what? I don't put it off. I'm in control. Yeah. I don't have too much trust in this, actually, for the auto throttle actually doing its job and calculating. So I'm going to manually bring it in. It might just be me doing something, but I don't know. Okay, land three. Don't need to, but I have it set. Disconnect the autopilot in a minute because we don't need to go into auto. Right. Autopilot disconnect. I'm control. Autopilot disconnect. I'm control. All flight vectors can stay on. Okay. Just variable winds right now. Just trying to stay on the glide slope. I just dipped a little low there, but minimum landing. Let's start retarding the throttles. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh, that's fine. And we're on the ground. Speed brakes out. Reversers out. Auto reverse. Alright, versus stowed, auto brake disarmed, and we can vacate right here. This is Salt Lake City, ladies and gentlemen. For your own safety and the safety of those seated around you, please remain in your seats with your seat belts fastened and carry on luggage stowed until the aircraft comes to a complete stop at the gate and the captain turns off the fastened seat belt sign. Well, that was a pretty good landing. I'm okay with that. Alright, let's start cleaning up the aircraft. Spoilers retracted, flaps up. Landing lights can come off. We can leave the taxi light on. Nose gear light can come off. When I turn off lights can stay on, since that. Wing light can come off. And uh, let's also check the eye cast. Auto throttle and auto brakes, that's fine. Auto brake disarmed or to off. We can turn off the flight directors completely, which will turn off the autopilot completely. And we actually should be good. I'm gonna start the APU in a minute. We have a little bit of a long taxi, so I'm not gonna start it immediately. But once the AP is running, we'll switch to APU power, and then we can text it to the gate. The uh, real-world equivalent for this flight came into uh, Delta 6, so that's the same gate we're going to come into. Is our gate. Now, unfortunately, I can't see the GSX marshaller. I'm assuming he's in the building or something. Yep, he is. All right, that's great. Oh, wait, can we see him from there? Okay, I'm actually going to stop here rather than have GSX run me into the terminal, so let's do that. Parking brake, set, APU power on, we can turn off our gens for the engine so we can ensure that this is not going to cause a complete loss of power, looks good, okay, and with that being said, we can shut down engines, engine shut down, 
Okay, and let's start turning stuff off. These can come off, because your lights can come off. That can go off. Those to off. Um, these can stay on. What else? We can only leave on the aft pumps for that, but I'll leave a cross feed just so we don't have a major fuel imbalance coming out of that. Utility buses and all that, we can leave these on for now. Um, hydraulics can come off. What else? What else? These look fine. Uh, we can set these to off. Window heats can come off. And these to off. Alright. Looks good. And we can actually begin with deboarding. Alright everyone, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and smack the like button for more flight sim content like this in the future. As for the CS767, um, it's a pretty good aircraft. I'm not going to say it's great. It's not perfect. Um, there's a few flaws in it that I'm sure will be, will be fixed later on. Ultimately, I don't necessarily agree with the $100 price tag, but if it does go on sale for a more reasonable price, then I totally agree with purchasing it. The frames are much better than their previous versions, and you know it's very stunning visually, and it's modeled very well. Of course, that's my subjective opinion, and everyone else has their own, so, you know, to purchase at your own risk. Anyway, so, without further ado, I'm Jordan. See you in the next episode.